Thank you and good morning. My name is Miranda Hallett. I am a postdoc in the lab of Barbara Fingleton here in Cancer Biology Department. I'm also a member of the Career Symposium Planning Committee on behalf of the Brett Career Development Office as well as my fellow committee members. We are pleased to introduce the keynote speaker this morning. Dr. Linda Dis Disselroth is a public affairs professional in the global health, healthcare, and biomedical R&D sectors. She recently served as a senior counselor in the healthcare practice of APCO Worldwide, which is a global strategic communication and public affairs firm headquartered in Washington, D.C. She previously held a vice president position at Merck and Company Incorporated in public affairs, global health policy, and also health policy. Dr. Disselroth holds a Bachelor's of Science in Medical Technology from the University of Michigan, also a Doctor of Philosophy in Environmental Health from the University of Cincinnati, excuse me. And she completed her post doctoral fellowship here at Vanderbilt University in biochemistry in the lab of Fred Gingrich. As if that's not enough, enough, she also holds a Juris Doctor from Rutgers Law in Newark, New Jersey. And she is a member of the Council of Foreign Relations in the Economic Club of Washington, D.C., an advisory board member of the journal Global Health Governance, an honorary professor in public health at East Tennessee State University. Dr. Disseroth just recently, as of Monday recently, acquired a new position, and she's starting a new position at Pharma, which is the Pharmaceutical Research and Manufacturers of America. Her position is Deputy Vice President of International Alliance Development, and this position, with her background in government and foundations, will be a perfect fit for her. We are thrilled to have her back here on campus, and please join me in welcoming her today. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Good morning, lab dogs. Well, at least that's what Fred Gingrich used to call us postdocs and graduate students in his laboratory some 30 years ago. And I understand from his annual Christmas letter to all of us that tradition still continues. Now, I know that Fred couldn't be here today. Um, it was something about salmon fishing in Alaska, which is his <laughs> annual, annual retreat. Uh, but I had the privilege of visiting with Vanderbilt about five years ago um, to uh, address Fred's research group on, on global health and HIV AIDS. And here we're pictured with Martha Martin, who for many years uh, was Fred's uh, chief uh, collaborator and uh, a research assistant in his laboratory. So influencing human health with your PhD degree. Um, when I was asked to give this keynote address uh, and to prepare, of course, you look back on your career. And, um, and as I reflected, I realized I, I did not have a grand plan. I just really used my PhD as a, a launching point uh, to take and create opportunities. Uh, ones that I felt drawn to and compelled uh, to, uh, to learn and to contribute. And uh, in this way, I ended up having a career that so far has been you know, completely unpredictable and certainly unforgettable. And then when I look through the years and, and ask myself, well, what has been then through this, you know, my calling, my purpose in life, why do you get up in the morning uh, or in the middle of the night worrying about your work the next day? And I think that the thread, the common thread, has been my desire to improve human health around the world. And so I have been incredibly uh, fortunate and privileged uh, to be able to do that and uh, to to have influenced uh, human health in, in many ways. So I would like to ask you to join uh, in a part of my personal journey today that I will share with you and imagine how you might embrace the world of human health and make a difference. So I'll, I will uh, you know, cover today, uh, hopefully with some stories and visuals about some of the key career decisions that I made along the way, and focusing a little bit on decisions of, of attending law school, uh, my work on HIV AIDS, and entry into the consulting world, and then of course, what's next. So first on the kind of the early career decisions, I call this the research phase, and it uh, begins with a PhD. Let's go. 
Now, I was the first in uh, my family to go to college. So I went to University of Michigan, and on graduation day in the large Chrysler Arena <coughs> in Ann Arbor with thousands of graduates, of course, in my you know, regular gown, I'm looking at some students, graduates, sitting in the front row. And they have these beautifully colored gowns and hoods. <laughs> and I wonder, who are those people? <laughs> and somebody told me, oh, those are people getting their doctorate degrees. And I said, wow, I want one of those hoods. <laughs> so, so, you know, so much for uh, motivational you know, factors and pulls. So I, um, I you know, did go on to you know, enter the, the PhD program at University of Cincinnati uh, in the Department of Environmental Health. And the, uh, uh, the concentration was in toxicology. I was so naive to the academic world. Uh, so I start starting in the, my graduate studies and listening to conversations with my classmates, and they started mentioning a postdoc, postdoc fellowship, postdoc stint, and I'm asking myself, what in the world is a postdoc? And then I learned that getting your PhD, you know, often doesn't really make you a real scientist. You have to do a postdoc <laughs> fellowship. You might have to do two postdoc fellowships. And, uh, and I, it really quite amazed me. I said, well, my gosh, I could have gone to medical school in residency. I mean, part of the reason I thought that a PhD would be shorter than all of that. But uh, I ended up graduating uh, from University of Cincinnati and basked in the glory of wearing a beautiful, colorful hood. <laughs> so from there, next part was getting that postdoc. And so I joined Fred's lab actually 30 years ago uh, this past June. And so I joined Fred in the Department of Chemistry and the Center for Molecular Toxicology. And the concentration was understanding the molecular basis of genetic polymorphisms in, in human um, drug metabolism. So here I am preparing, grinding up a human liver in a wearing blender in the lab. <laughs> and here I am with my research animals, my rabbits on the left, and my big goat and little goat uh, on the right hand there. And that's what I use to raise uh, antibodies to uh, human cytochrome P450s. To this day, I hate anything related to goat. You know, goat <laughs> cheese, goat milk, uh, that smell just always stays with you. And it's not pleasant. And then, of course, I was with my other f uh, fellow lab dogs. Uh, and I'm pictured up in the middle there. And there's Fred. Uh, where there was a party uh, held by one of the postdoc uh, fellows in the laboratory. And here's one of your own today, Professor Dan Liebler, uh, who is now director of the Center of Molecular Toxicology. Dan was a graduate student in Fred's lab when I was a postdoc there. I absolutely loved being a postdoc in Fred's lab. The high energy interfacing with graduate students and postdocs and visiting faculty members from around the world. I was thrilled to have been the first to isolate the human debrisoquin metabolizing cytochrome P450, now known as uh, P452D6. And then terribly disappointed when my husband was transferred unexpectedly early with his job to New Jersey. So I decided it would probably be a good idea to go with him. Um, so uh, I started to apply to pharmaceutical companies and chemical companies because high cost of living in New Jersey, I needed more than a postdoc salary. So that was now the transition into the corporate world. And Merck called. So somebody from HR call, gives me a call and reads off a job description, clinical uh, pharmacology research assistant, and it's about the designing of phase one, phase